The temperatures in Oklahoma this Wednesday, July 20th, will not only be record-breaking, but they will be downright satanic. Take a look at this. The coolest area of the state is the Panhandle coming in at 107, and the majority of the state will be 113 to 115. And dangerous heat is gripping more than 40 million people across the U.S. As the unofficial records show, well, there has been quite a few unofficial records just in the last 24 hours. Now, this heat wave pales in comparison to heat waves back in 1936, as this is highly localized. And the warnings coming from weather.gov include the central U.S. heat is expanding, and it will expand through Wednesday, which will be their lose day. With Severe thunderstorms tracking across the northern U.S. as well. Now, dangerous and intense heat across the plains and Mississippi Valley is expected to expand into the southeast by late week with numerous record high temperatures that may be broken. And flash drought conditions are reported as far east as Massachusetts amid a record-breaking hot summer. The reality is that there's no drought east of the Mississippi almost anywhere. So this is just fear-mongering. As well as the dangerous heat gripping 40 million people that they have to be released from schools. The reality is that the East Coast is going to receive record precipitation through the first week of August, and the Four Corners region is going to be well quenched, which means that a lot of these drought areas are going to be reduced because this map looks nothing like it did 10 years ago. The areas of exceptional drought 10 years ago were much more widespread, so we're recovering and the precipitation map proves it. But the temperatures will become more locally insane, just like this, Wednesday, in Oklahoma, July 20th. I hope you have air conditioning. Now, it's not the hottest Oklahoma's ever been. In fact, Oklahoma has seen 120-degree temperatures back in 1936, July 18th. 1936, Alva, in Alva, Oklahoma, it was 120. July 19th, 1936, at Altus, Irig Res Station. On August 10th, 1936, it was 120 at Potio. In August 12th of 1936, it was 120 at Altus Irrigation Res Station. So Oklahoma has seen 120 degrees. So 115 that they're predicting is not catastrophic or world-ending, and it, it's not even record-breaking for the state. But it is hot, and now we have some solar activity to, to contend with. So what is a grand solar minimum, and why are there swings between extremes? It has to do with the jet stream, the weakening magnetic field on Earth, and the reduced output from the sun. And research shows that blocking persistence increases when solar activity is low, causing weather patterns to become locked in place at high and intermediate latitudes for prolonged periods of time. Now, during a solar minimum, the jet stream's usual zonal flow, which is a west to east direction, as you can see here in the graphic, it reverts to a more meridional flow and it breaks down and it jams up. And that brings really cold temperatures way down to the equator and very hot temperatures up into the mid-latitudes. This is exaggerated further during grand solar minimums, like the one we're entering now, and explains why regions may become unseasonably hot or cold, while others are unusually dry or flooding, with the extremes lasting for extended periods of time. And this is summed up quite well here in the 2017 paper by Schwander, Roher, and others. Influence of Solar Variability on the Occurrence of Central European Weather Types from 1763 to 2009. 14-page read, which shows you sunspot numbers and their influence on the climate and what happens, well... to empires, they end. And here, the 2020 paper, August 4th, modern grand solar minimum will lead 
to terrestrial cooling. And we know that. Even the mainstream's CMIP6 model shows drastic cooling from now into the future. Termed the modern eddy minimum. And cycle 25 is not looking any more impressive than cycle 24, which would be two of the lowest solar cycles since the centennial minimum back in, back a hundred years ago. Now we know that these cooling periods occur periodic and episodic, just about every hundred years. And here you can see all of the heating and cooling, temperatures on the left and degrees C. And then those marked colorful stripes, no, that is not the pride flag. That is in fact temperature fluctuations that ended empires, including the Jin dynasty collapse in the 1210s, which also ended the Four Corners Pueblo people completely gone by this time or leaving right around 1210 because <laughs> it got cold and it got dry, exceptionally dry and cold in some places. Temperature dropped up to three degrees C just for, you know, a decade or so. The same thing happened during the Dalton minimum, the Centennial minimum and the Maunder minimum and now the new modern Eddy minimum where you can see here solar activity on the top the graph from 1600 to present below and that as solar activity waned 16 to 1700 there were almost no sunspots and it was a very dark time and then we had some robust recovery and then a drop off during the Dalton minimum here which crushed economies and famines and then we recovered again and then back into the centennial minimum with more famines and the dust bowl and then a recovery into modern times. But now we've been dropping off a cliff since 2000, since the modern maximum. We're dropping into the next grand minimum, which is every three cycles. Some people call it a super grand minimum, but that isn't even a term. And what happens almost every time? Empires end. The Northern Chinese famine, Qing Dynasty ended during the centennial minimum, or during the Dalton minimum, my bad. And we are due for the next end of the empire, happening now. It begins with global unrest, which we're seeing, well, quite spectacularly. Then famine. Then the empires crumble. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as the empire crumbles. We're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. If you have time, why wouldn't you prepare for the inevitable? A grid down scenario, a large solar flare. It is coming. A Carrington-like event, 1859, during the, right before the centennial minimum, is coming right now, right before the bottom of the modern any minimum. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And be safe. We love you. And that's a boom.